Hello and welcome to the next set of videos in my underwater stitchy make-along. This month we're going to be looking at tentacles and things. So in this first video I'd like to show you some different jellyfish. Jellyfish are made up of a bell or a dome-like shape at the top and then several tendrils or tentacles coming out of the bell. And you can make the bell in a few different ways. One way you can see into it and the other way you can't. And you can see that depending on how you, you create your bell, if you can see into it, the tendrils sort of come out from the inside of the bell and then you can decorate the bell up as much as you like. Or if you draw it so that you can't see up into the bell, the tendrils come from emerge from the bottom edge and I'll be showing you a variety of ways to create create a jellyfish with a variety of different tendrils. So we'll start out with the dome and there are two options for this. You can either start out by cutting out the dome shape first as I'm doing here and I'm using this bluish purple cotton quilting fabric and the reason I've chosen this color is jellyfish often look quite transparent but at the aquarium in Vancouver near where I live they often will have the jellyfish tank with a black light so that the jellyfish look very much bluish purple like this color. So now I'm going to start sewing on my dome and now the dome if you notice the shape is far more curved on one side and that's the top and then the curve at the bottom is it's shallower it's more straight along the bottom so I'm going to start sewing on the dome here using a blanket stitch. I've shown how to do this in previous videos but basically you come up at the top edge of the fabric and then you go down in a diagonal from from where you came up and then when you come and then you come up again directly above that spot and you catch the thread in the loop there and that creates what's called a blanket stitch so the stitch moves in two directions it moves across the top of the fabric but it also creates a little line into the fabric which creates a really nice edge for the jellyfish and it gives the jellyfish some some interest visual interest there and I'm using two strands off embroidery cotton in a light blue because this again gives that black light like effect to my jellyfish when you see the jelly jellyfish in the water they they tend to be translucent and I'll show you how to create that look in a few minutes but on this light color fabric it's easier to create the jellyfish with a dark color or if you had a transparent dark color cloth you could do, use that as well. Now what I've done here is I've switched from the blanket stitch and I'm doing a back stitch. The way that the back stitch works is you take a normal stitch forward and then you, instead of taking the next stitch forward, you take the next stitch back to fill in the space and then you go forward past the previous stitch and then fill in the space. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating the line that will create the inside of the jellyfish. The bottom part of the jellyfish here will be will appear to be the inside of it as if you were looking into a cup or maybe into a mushroom turned upside down and it this line is a little bit curved it can be straight or a little bit curved to match the line along the bottom there And now I'm going to go back and fill in the rest of that bottom edge there with blanket stitch again. And I was able to do that because where I started and where I finished, but it doesn't really matter how you get there as long as you blanket stitch all the way around the outside of your jellyfish 
and then in this case you have the option you don't really have to create that line but if you want to give the appearance like you're looking up into the jellyfish then that extra line there will give you a space to to create the inside of the jellyfish and I'll show you another option a little bit later on where you don't have to put this line in so if that line is confusing to you you can definitely do it without it it just adds a little bit of extra depth and texture to your piece and I know I've talked about this a lot so I'll just go all the way back around until I've secured the edge off my jellyfish all the way around And now I've still got some thread there, so I'm going to go back up to the top. When I drew the jellyfish, I had a little bit of decoration on the jellyfish bell. So I'm going to do that with some chain stitches. Basically half a lazy daisy. So the way I'm doing that is I'll come up where I want the center or the point to be where, where all my stitches are going to emanate from. Then I go back into the same hole and then I bring my needle up and I, I apologize that this is a theme for this video is me going out of frame. So I have refilmed this multiple times to try to get it in frame, but some, for some reason my brain just kept moving the cloth out of the frame. So a chain stitch, you go, you come up on top of your cloth, go back into the same hole and then come up a little ways away through the loop and then you secure that loop. So that's it for chain stitch. That's it for the dome in this version. So now let me show you a different version. This time I'm working on my dark cloth and I've got a piece of sheer white fabric that's going to create a transparent look for my jellyfish bell and I've decided that this time I'm not going to cut out the cloth to the shape of the bell before I start. I've got I've cut it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to handle sewing on sewing a teeny tiny little bell onto the small piece of fabric would be really quite fiddly so I've decided that I'm going to do stitching on a bigger on a bigger piece of cloth. It doesn't have to be huge, but just big enough to be comfortable to handle. But I'm doing everything else in exactly the same way. I'm using the blanket stitch to outline the edge off the, the bell shape, and I'm just doing this by eye. I haven't drawn it on, but you certainly could if you felt more comfortable following a line that you've drawn on with pencil or with some other marker. I know that there are erasing markers, but for me, I find it more difficult to follow a line than to just stitch the shape that I want. And then if it goes off and is a little bit wonky, I don't have to worry about it. And wonkiness is perfectly acceptable in nature. Things are not perfectly shaped. So I'm creating the top part of the bell, which is quite curved at this point with my blanket stitch. And then when I, just like I did with the with the other piece using the purple fabric. When I feel like I've created enough of the top part of my shell and see what I mean about going out of frame, happened again. Now I'm going to, the same way I did with the purple fabric, I'm going to create that line going across that will be the, the top edge off, my, off the dome. And then I will go back with blanket stitch and, and create the, the bottom edge off, my, off the dome there. So I'm going to do this back stitch all the way across
So when I'm doing this, when every time I'm stitching one of these jellyfish bells, it reminds me so much of a jelly bean. The shape of it seems so much like a jelly bean to me. And I mean, I guess they are jellyfish, right? So that probably makes a lot of sense. So when I get back to the other edge, And I'm gonna fumble around and try to figure out what's going on with the uh, with the needle there. <laughs> Once I get back to that other edge, and I apologize, the part where I'm stitching the bottom edge of the jellyfish ended up being completely off off camera. So now, but it was essentially the same thing that I did before. I stitched along the bottom edge and then I. I trimmed around the outside edge off the cloth. But let me let me show you that again. This time I'm going to use this lace. I noticed that this section off the leaf there reminded me a lot of the jellyfish shape. So I decided to use this solid leaf shape area and outline that using blanket stitch around the outside of that denser part of the, the lace there. The more open part, the more meshy part. I think it would it would not have been a good choice for this, but this more more opaque part, the part there where where it's not such an open texture will make a good will make a good bell for a jellyfish and you can just sort of maybe you can make out how I'm following the edge of that line there and I'm not going all the way to to the bottom I'm just going to use this one sec segment here again again with the same blanket stitch and I'm actually sewing with sewing thread but I decided after the fact that it was probably not not the best choice it didn't lie flat and i did end up going back around with one strand of embroidery cotton just to create a nicer crisper edge the 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 sewing thread is very tightly spun and and wound quite tightly and it just didn't lay nice and flat it's really better for sewing with a sewing machine and i actually like sewing with with the embroidery thread, even one strand better than with this, the sewing thread, but it was worth the, worth the try. And I was hoping to get a nice thin line, but ended up, like I said, I ended up not liking it, but I'm, this time I'm not going to create that line. So you're not going to be the in, able to see the inside of the bell here. I'm just going around from, around the whole shape, the top and the bottom of it. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to trim trim this shape off. So you can mix and match these. You don't have to use lace if you don't want to. If you've got if you've got some cotton fabric or other other transparent fabric that you'd like to use, I would suggest that you don't use something that frays easily. So uh, I found that the other mesh that I was using, that other sheer fabric, was quite lightly to fray and I'm going to have to keep an eye on it and I if you've got something like fray check you can do that but here I am I'm trimming and using my scissors to trim trim close to the stitching line but ideally not actually cut any of the stitches that I've just put on there and you have to be really careful that you don't that you don't cut, cut those stitches but the closer you can get to the your stitch your line of stitches without cutting them the better and the nicer this this cap will look and again i'm going to show you as much as i can but then i end up going out of frame again so but you get the idea of how you trim around the edge and this is what i did with the other piece as well that ended up not getting filmed so so that's it for basically it for for creating the bell, the top part off the jellyfish.
and now I'm going to show you a, different, a number of different stitches to create the tentacles. And you might have noticed that jellyfish have some thinner and some thicker tentacles. So let's give this one a try. We'll start here on, on my, purple, my purple piece. And as you can see, I'm starting right up against that, that line through the middle of my jellyfish bell. And this will give the appearance that the tentacles are coming out from inside the jellyfish. And for this first one, I'm using what's what's called stem stitch, which is basically the back side off the back stitch. So you're working in the opposite direction from the direction that the stitches are moving in. So you take a long stitch and then you go back about halfway along that stitch, go into the fabric and come out past the end of your stitch. So I still have some thread, so I, I'm going to move over and do another one of those again using the stem stitch. And the stem stitch creates a line that's a little bit heavier than the back stitch. And of course it depends on what thread you use. If you're using one strand or three strands, it'll be thicker or thinner, but if you, but if if you've got the same number of strands, the stem stitch will create a, a chunkier, a chunkier line than the back stitch does. And now you don't want these tendrils or these tentacles to be perfectly straight. They're kind of curved a little bit, and sometimes they, they can be twisted or, or looped, and sometimes they can cross each other. You don't want them to be really stiff and straight looking, but you want them to be much more natural and organic. And then the more you add, the more the more interesting this becomes. So you can do as many or as few as you like, and I'll show you a few other stitches that we'll use to create chunkier lines or thinner lines. And this time I'm going to be working with a with the chain stitch with again with two strands of embroidery floss on this little jellyfish here and you can see that I've already done a few a few of the tendrils using using stem stitch and I did that with my sewing thread again and now I'm going to use the chain stitch to create the thicker tentacles for this little jellyfish here and as you can see it's quite a bit thicker and it's a really nice stitch to use to get a nice curved line and you can see I'm going over top I'm crossing over top off the other tentacles and that's part of the natural look things don't just sort of stand side by side they overlap and cross over each other and the more I add the more tentacles I add the more my my jellyfish starts to come to life here I've got lots of thread left on my needle, so I'm, I'm going to do a second thicker tentacle here with, with the chain stitch again going back up. And it doesn't really matter that these chain stitches are going to be going in the opposite direction. They don't, it doesn't really change the appearance that much and it just gives you a nice, a nice wandering, floating, flexible tentacle-like shape. I'll work my way back up to the top before I secure it. Now, because this jellyfish does not have that line, so we know that it's angled away from us and we're not looking up into the cap or the bell of the jellyfish. So all my tentacles just stop at 
that bottom edge they don't go up into the body off the off the jellyfish as they would if I put that line in so that you could see into the into the bell this way we you don't look you're not looking into the bell and the tentacles are going into the jellyfish on the other side behind behind in the area that we can't see and then when I get back to the top to that top edge I'll just secure my thread off and move off camera again <laughs> and now you'll see the difference when I'm working on this bigger piece and again I'm doing two strands I'm using two strands to create that chain stitch but in the previous one in the little jellyfish that chain stitch line was really prominent and bold but here you'll notice that it doesn't really look much heavier than the other the other tentacles that I have here you know it's worth the effort and it's worth worth trying it out because you don't really know how it'll look so you know the more variety you have the better changing the color off the thread and changing the the stitch that you use gives lots of variety and interest to your tentacles. And now I'm going to do a new stitch that I have don't think I've done before, and it's called couching. Now this is a way to, to secure really thick threads. So I'm using this really kind of shiny pink thread, and as you can see, I'm having a really hard time. It's quite thick and bulky, and I'm having a really hard time getting it through the cloth. And you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing taking those really big long stitches. They're not very secure. Well, this is where the couching part comes in. What you do is after you've taken those big long stitches that I had to work a little bit hard to get through the cloth, now I'm taking a really thin fine thread and I'm using again that just fine plain white sewing thread and I'm stitching around that thick thread to secure it down so that's what's called couching and I do that all the way down the length off that long thread and I've left them fairly loose they're not really tightly secured there I can curve that line a little bit it doesn't have to be perfectly straight I move the thick thread with my thumb a little bit to curve it so it's not perfectly straight and I can curve it quite a bit if I like, especially if I have not secured it at the back. I can always, I can always make pull a little bit out if I want to curve it a lot. And as I mentioned before, sometimes I'll I'll let my threads, my tentacles, cross each other so that it gives a much more natural appearance there. And I can add as many of these as I like. Now you can see that that bit of knitting yarn that I have on the table there. Well, I pulled it out especially for this because I can even use that to couch that down now. Now I'm going to get out some of that really thick knitting yarn and I'm going to couch the, this down as well. Now I'm not even going to bother trying to get this knitting yarn to go through the cloth. I'm just going to start with it on the top surface and because it's so thick what I can do is with my, with my sewing thread I can just make sure that I, I sew the, the ends of that yarn exactly where I want it to go to secure it down just on the front surface I'm just going to take I'm going to take several stitches with my my thin couching thread over the the end of that yarn there to get it to secure just sitting on the top surface and and if I do that enough times it will be secure enough that it won't come out and I'll be good to go I don't actually have to go all the way through now it's a bit harder to secure thinner threads down, but this this really chunky yarn will will work quite well that way. And now I'm doing exactly what I did with the 
with the pink thread I'm just using the very thin and I've used white and it's kind of adding kind of a spiral texture on top of the yarn and the pink floss as well but if your couching thread matches the thicker thicker yarn that you're using a little bit more closely then it'll essentially disappear and you won't even see it that's the other thing with doing couching like this it's really easy to create tight curves and stuff that are not so easy with other with other embroidery techniques so you can do all kinds of quite elaborate twists and turns and curls and just sew them down So I'll just keep going until I get all the way to the end and then I will secure that the other end off my yarn very securely as well with quite a few stitches over top of the very end of it to make sure that it doesn't come undone. And now I'm just just about at the end and I'm going to take those extra stitches to secure that that very end down just by sewing over and over and over to make sure it's very well secured there now I'm going to go back to one of them to one of my small jellyfish and do back stitch this time so the back stitch is is the same stitch that I used across the bell of the jellyfish, but now I'm using it as a tentacle, and it it creates a, a very delicate, fine, straight line, especially if you only use one strand of cotton. And as you can see, I'm doing it over top of some of the other stitches that I've already put in place there. And I do apologize that you're seeing the video in bits and pieces and I'm jumping between one jellyfish and another one. I filmed very uh, several different versions and I spent a lot of time with the bulk of my <laughs> of my stitching well out of the frame. So I've kind of cobbled together the best bits that you can see the most clearly what I'm doing. And that's what you're seeing. So I used essentially the same stitches on, on all of the jellyfish and in different orders. And as you can see that I'm making sure that they crisscross the other pieces that are already there. And there you go, there's that one. And now I want to show you, I made some really teeny tiny little jellyfish as well. And now let me show you finally how I made those little teeny tiny ones. So what I did was for the cap or the bell, I used a single fly stitch. And we've used these fly stitches lots and lots of times. And then below the fly stitch, I did a few just straight stitches, you know, and I didn't even worry about what they look like. I just had a few straight stitches coming out of the little fly stitch and that created the appearance of either really teeny tiny babies or or jellyfish that are further away than the than the large one that you can see so closely. And now if you want these to appear like they're really far away, I would use the thinnest finest thread that you have. And after I made some tendrils or some tentacles I went back in and I filled in the cup a little bit with a few straight stitches in the cup but I don't even know if that that part is strictly necessary do they look perfect no not at all do they do they look interesting I think so but if you don't like them you feel free to not not include them you can always leave out whatever you like and there you go I'm going out of frame yet again <laughs> so anyway I hope you were able to see enough to give you an idea of how to create some jellyfish for your 
piece and let's have a look at some of the finished jellyfish that I made. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I will have another video for you in another day or so. Bye for now.